Now, you went ahead and played football in college as well at Occidental, yes. is that right? Yes. From the high school level to college and then to pro, obviously, are, are very big steps. What was it like for you? Well, the guys are faster. Yeah, bigger. Bigger. <laughs> yeah. And they hit harder. Yeah, <laughs> a lot harder, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I played uh, Division Three football, so I, you know, I always had aspired to go play Division One. But sure. I, believe it or not, I was not big enough, or I was not uh, fast enough. Um, but I did get to play at Division Three uh, for uh, uh, Dale Weedoff, mm -hmm. who is still the coach at uh, Oxdale right. right now, uh, and has done a wonderful job with the program. I think Oxy has been in the top ten of Division Three. Uh, schools uh, for the last five years. Wow. Now, did you grow up loving football? Did you watch oh, yeah. the Rams? Did oh, you yeah. fall? Okay, yeah, everything. Love the Rams, you know. Uh, <laughs> my family, you know, loved USC. So okay. they would, you know, follow Trojan football. Okay. Um, so I, I, when the, when the Rams, I think it was 1970, uh, I start, started losing interest in the Rams, and then I became a Miami Dolphins fan. Oh, really? Yep. Interesting. Yep. And, well, you know, it's funny, because I grew up in a football family as well, three brothers, and, you know, we always used to say, football's life, the rest are just details. But the, I think just what you learn from that game and really understanding it is just invaluable. Well, as you said, you learn to overcome adversity. Yeah. You learn discipline. Right. You learn teamwork. Yes. And you're, you're working as a team towards a common goal. Exactly. So I think that's probably the, the best... Uh, sport to teach those kind of life ex uh, experiences that you can use for the rest of your life right um, that there is now you talked about about being on the fishing boat and, and spending the summers doing that are you still a fisherman today I wish I had time for it yeah <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, my family got out of the fishing business to a great extent uh, back in uh, the mid 80s mm -hmm. uh, that was kind of the in industry had declined by that right. time and uh, the canneries were exiting the markets here and going to um, Samoa and Puerto Rico. And uh, many of the fishing boats were uh, being sold off and, and that kind of thing. And you went into business after college? I, I went to work for uh, General Petroleum. The, the company's main focus when I was started there wasn't servicing the marine trade. Right. It was servicing the fishing boats, servicing tugboats, uh, seismic vessels. Uh, the um, ocean carrying vessels. Okay. So uh, I got into sales and marketing and start uh, broadening not only the marine side but the commercial side of the business, uh, the container terminals, stevedoring companies, railroads, that kind of thing. Wow. And we just branched out. We just kept um, building a bigger and bigger horseshoe around the, with the port as far as going inland. Wow. So interesting. Yeah. Was there any one particular thing you liked over something else? Having the opportunity to kind of I loved sales and marketing. Yeah. I, mean, I like to, you know, I like people okay. and, and, you know, working with people, trying to solve a common uh, uh, challenge and uh, sales, uh, you know, provided that. Right, absolutely. Uh, I did operations for quite a while. That's not as fun. That's a, that's can be a little more stressful, yeah. and, you know, because you're trying to get things to perform all the time, 24-7. Right. And so um, there's a lot of late hours that I spent. And then... Uh, the last part of my career there at General Petroleum, I was involved in our managing our lubricating um, lubricant manufacturing plants. Okay. Yeah. Well, then after a little ways, you had a little free time because you met your wife. <laughs> well, I met my wife in uh, 1988. Okay. Yeah, we were uh, uh, working out together at uh, Rolling Hills Racquet Club. My sister was a friend of hers and, and kind of introduced us and. Okay. Uh, we uh, we started dating after that, and two years later we got married. Well, that's awesome, yeah. and I know she is the she works at the Dalmatian Club. Is that right? She works at the Dalmatian American Club. She's okay. the business manager right. and general manager of the um, of the club. You know, managing its day to day operations. Okay, and yeah. you've got three kids now. I have a daughter who's a senior at PV High, a son that's a sophomore at PV High, and another son that's an eighth grader and so I'll have one in college next uh, fall and two in, in PVI. So I was going to ask you what you do with your free time, but that's probably what you do with your free time. <laughs> yeah, I, that's what I do. Go to their sporting events and their, uh, you know, just, just their events. You were already the honorary mayor of San Pedro. What's the most challenging thing for a mayor? Well, I think it's, uh, you know, the being the leader mm -hmm. on, on the council or the organization. Um, it, that's you know you have to be the leader you have to set the agenda um, you know I think it's 
you have to run the meetings. Mm -hmm. Okay, right, so yeah. I mean, you're 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 more involved than maybe the other council members are just you know on the administrative side. Right. Um, it's kind of fun being either council person or the um, you know mayor pro tem because you're not you're not also involved in running the meeting. Exactly. And then you you know you get to ask the questions and you know give a lot of comment and that kind of thing. So I guess it's balancing. It's just a little extra work. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting you having lived here your whole life what's the biggest change that you've seen over the last 30 years well i think that there's more environmental awareness okay. than than there was 30 years ago right and you know what i love about this area growing up here is you know i mean look at all this beautiful yeah, open it's space amazing. Yep. i mean where can you find this in in la county right i mean probably the closest area that would replicate the open, the open space nearby here is uh, like Catalina Island. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It's uh, is not much. It, not much has changed in thirty years, but yet there are many things that have changed. Right. I mean, marine land is not not there anymore, right. but Terranea is, mm -hmm, exactly. and and yet it's still a beautiful use of that property. Absolutely. I mean, uh, what a, what a gorgeous uh, gem for for Rancho Palos Verdes. Yeah, it really yeah. is. I mean, it's it's just a jewel and when you talk to so many people that live here they love just going down walking around yeah. so you're right it's not marine land anymore but it's Terranea yeah. yeah which is very nice yeah um, but I mean it is my wife laughs at me because she says you've really never lived more than a five mile radius of where you grew up exactly and that's and that's true and whether whether it was down in San Pedro or whether it was in Rancho Palos Verdes I've always lived in pretty much a, a five mile radius now, did you ever want to move somewhere else, or? Well, yeah. I mean, you always have these uh, inclinations that, oh boy, wouldn't that be great to to live there or, or move there? Uh, my, I've been very fortunate in my life. I've traveled all over the world, um, so You've I've seen lots of places. I've seen lots yeah. of places. Mm -hmm. I've seen lots of places, but you know what? There's there's no place like home. I was just gonna say it's always good to come home. There's no place like home. Anthony Mizzetich, so nice to spend some time with you today. Well, thank you very much, Maria. Thank you. Thanks very much for this uh, occasion. Yeah, it's great. And that will do it for today's show. A very special thank you to our Mayor Pro Tem, Anthony Mizzetich, and thanks to you for watching. I'm Maria Sorrell, and we'll see you next time.